In this video, I want to introduce nitrogen metabolism and nitrogen fixation. So as many of you may or may not know, N2, or nitrogen gas, is a very prevalent gas in our atmosphere. It's about 80% of the gas in our atmosphere. And generally speaking, it's not a very reactive gas. In addition, gaseous nitrogen is not a usable form of nitrogen. What do I mean by that? Well, us, or, us humans need nitrogen for biological molecules, and many other organisms do as well. So specifically, what do we need it for? Well, if you think about things like amino acids, right, that make up proteins, they contain nitrogen, which we need, right? If we want to make amino acids, we need to have nitrogen around. In addition, um, nucleic acids, right, we need to, which are made from nucleotides, um, they have nitrogen in them as well. So we need to have nitrogen in order to make these biological compounds. So how can nitrogen gas be converted into a usable form? Well, that process is called nitrogen fixation. So nitrogen fixation requires two things. Those two things are energy and electrons. So uh, there are two ways in which nitrogen nitrogen can be fixed. So the first way is lightning, which basically provides both, right, the energy and the electrons for nitrogen fixation. But nitrogen or nitrogen fixation by lightning is not really too relevant for us. What's more relevant is uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria. Nitrogen fixing bacteria. So these things are pretty important. Where are these nitrogen fixing bacteria? They exist in the roots of leguminous plants. So things like soybeans and peanuts and peas, in the roots of those plants there are these bacteria. So the bacteria and the plant have a symbiotic relationship. So and they both benefit from the relationship together. So the plants, what they get is they get a reduced form of nitrogen, which is a usable form of nitrogen. Specifically, that usable form of nitrogen is ammonium ion. Okay, So the plant benefits in that it gets a reduced and usable form of nitrogen from bacteria, which is ammonium. The bacteria, what they get is they get ATP, right, which provides energy for the production of the usable nitrogen because this process is highly endergonic and requires energy. So the bacteria gets ATP uh, from the plant and then the plant benefits in that it gets the ammonium from the bacteria. So they both they both benefit from this relationship. So how does the actual nitrogen fixation though, how, how does that actually happen? So there's this complex of enzymes called the nitrogenase complex. What the nitrogenase complex simply does is it takes gaseous nitrogen and turns it into ammonium ion. So initially, we have a gas as nitrogen, and that of course has one, two, three, four, five pairs of electrons for a total of ten electrons. What we're going to do in this process is we want to create two ammoniums. So we're going to add six electrons and eight protons. Right, six electrons because um, each of these ammoniums have eight electrons total. So this is going to be a total of sixteen electrons, of course, and each ammonium has four. Uh, hydrogen on it, so those come from eight protons. So that's basically what the nitrogenase complex does: it is it turns this this uh, unusable form of nitrogen and turns it into a usable form of nitrogen. This ammonium here, we'll talk in a later video exactly about how it is usable. But for now, uh, this is what I wanted to get at. The overall reaction, essentially, what we're going to do is um, we actually take um, eight electrons and add them to the gaseous nitrogen and this process costs 16 ATP which is actually pretty crazy. Let me keep actually the gray color going here. So we have 16 ATP which of course is uh, turned into 16 ADP and 16 inorganic phosphates. These of course came from the plant, right? Now uh, we added 10 protons, and that might not make sense just yet, right? Adding 8 electrons and 10 protons, because over here, 
we said six electrons and eight protons, but we'll see what I mean in just a second. And of course, we created those two ammoniums, which are now usable. But we also created a hydrogen gas, right? So this hydrogen gas used up two protons and two electrons. So the extra two electrons from here and the two extra protons here were used to make a hydrogen gas. So now this ammonium can now be used for the synthesis of amino acids, which can be used for proteins, and of course nucleotides, which can be used for production of nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. One last thing I'd like to mention is that I'm a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moveuniversity.gmail.com and check out the description below for a little bit more information. Thanks for watching.